So a big part of voyaging around the world is researching the places that you're going to long before you get there. You, you really got to do your research. Um, we got arrested. We got arrested when we went to Australia. Bobby's Marina on the Dutch side, close to the airport. Bobby's Marina has actual slip and dockage, but it's also very much about this gigantic boatyard. We are here to find Renee and Lynette. A lot of living space in that thing, and it looks built strong. I mean, it's hard to really tell, but she's got a beautiful, big, full keel. Or is that anchor? No, that, the, those are for deploying anchors. They're not bow thrusters because they're not below the water line. Oh my god, she's massive. West Hill 32. Where? Isn't she beautiful? And right over here is the 36 foot long Moody sailing vessel named Bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing my washing. That's wonderful. Yeah, and it uses so, hardly any, so we're going to take it with us. Hardly any water? Hardly, hardly any, any water. Really? Yeah, so I'm going to take it with me. That's wonderful. <laughs> if I can find somewhere to put it inside the boat, I'm going to take it. I bet you'll it. try really hard <laughs> because it's a real convenience, isn't it? Yes, well, after so many years of washing in a bucket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that's wonderful, it's so small, it's so compact, and you could manage to create a space for it somewhere aboard. Well, I, I think that we'll shove it down in the in the engine compartment and really? tie it in there. <laughs> and just when I need to use it, I'll pull it out and use it on deck. That sounds great. Is it heavy? No, it's I can carry it. Really? It's wow. slight, it's all plastic, there's nothing... It's all plastic. It's all plastic. Wow. Oh, you've got a wind vane. Yeah, it's a Fleming. It's a Fleming. Yeah. Beautiful. It's wow. stainless steel. Yep. It's, we had this one on the other boat. Oh, the same one? Yes. You Did you transfer it from yeah. the other boat to this yeah. one? Yeah. Wow. She's beautiful. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is Mark 1. Yeah. The first version of the of the aft deck seating <laughs> on the rail here. Can I sit on it? Yeah, you can sit on it. It's a bit wonky though. Wow. Renee and Lynette are hoping that they can get Bubbly into a marina slip in the next month. 
they've been on the hard here just repairing renovating rebuilding this boat this is the boat that they will complete their circumnavigation on back to New Zealand wow this is a tough boat what's the big ball for it was um I tried it for a seat at the computer station. Oh, really? Yeah? yeah. How'd it work? It was too low. Too low. Yeah. Mm. But so we just yeah. use it out here, but I think it's going to go in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> it's very soon. Sorry, Ball, you're not going to New Zealand with us. <laughs> Is that a lazarette hat? This used to be the lazarette. Oh, and now, now it's, it's a, in the, the aft it's part of your, your aft cabin bedroom. Yes. <laughs> So it's a skylight. It's a skylight. <laughs> wow. She's a really solid boat. And you've got a couple of uh, Siemens solar panels here. Yes, we're going to install them on the rail at the back there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you have shore power here in, yeah. in the marina? Yeah. But That's a nice windlass. It's entirely manual? Yeah. Hi. Wow. You can put an engine on it, but we haven't done that yet. Hi. Um, we can have two crank handles, so we can both be cranking it up if it's difficult. Hi. Looks like a really good anchor here. Yes. Uh, what kind is that? Do you, is um, that a Delta? Yeah, it's a Delta. Oh, wow. But it's stainless steel. It's stainless. We bought it in Australia. Huh. So that also came from Tikaihau. Hi. Wow. We've taken lots of everything, the solar panels, yep. the wind generator. Um, you pretty much stripped the yeah. old boat yeah. for the new one. Yeah, because the, the gear on, on Te Kaiha was really good. The winches were really good. Overkill yep. for such a small boat, they had, it had really good winches. And what else have we taken? We have a, um, a um, Ampere. Do you know what that is? An, an, uh, yeah, that's a wind generator, isn't it? Yeah, but you, it's the one that you tow behind. You can tow. Oh, in the water. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going um, five knots, it makes five, five amps. If wow. You, if you're going six, six. And that's really good. Huh. And so we've taken that. And it, when, you're on, when you're at anchor, you can put it up in the... In the air? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really good. I bet that's come in really handy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow, I really like the non-skid deck. It needs to be painted. Yeah. I feel how hot it is. It's quite hot. Uh, yeah, if you paint it like white, it won't white, be as hot. Be, and and uh, it'll take the temperature of the boat down. Right sure. Too. I'm looking forward to sailing it. You've Thanks. not sailed her? No. Ever? No. Wow. This is called a Halberdia. And there's... Halberdia? I don't, yeah, there's a um, Halberdia Association. Huh. And, yeah, so I, I belong to that and... They, they, everyone says that they sail really well. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So she, I looked at the hull. She, she looks like just the kind of hull that yeah. I would want. <laughs> well, we, we've replaced all the through hull fittings. And we've, you have? We've taken, it was 14, and we've taken it down to 7. Wow, really? Yeah, so there was all these unnecessary through hull fittings. Wow. And we don't want them all. Engines just got to be put back in, and then we're ready to launch. Wow! We're ready, anti fouler, and then launch, and then yep. we'll, we'll paint paint the deck in the water. Wow! And put the mast up. The only thing we've got to, we've got to sort out the running rigging. Sort out the running rigging. Oh yeah. The, yeah. the, the standing rigging's good. The standing rigging's good. Yeah. Uh, these chain plates look good. Are they new or are they? No. No. They look great. Uh, I, well, they're not new. We didn't put them. Yeah. But I think um, a rigger did own the boat. Yep. Before the guy that we bought it off. Wow. Something inside was broken, so they yeah, were getting rid of it. Yeah, see the. We put a new gas thing in there. Oh, yeah. So, it's new to us. And it hasn't been run yet? No. Oh, but you replaced a part there. Yeah. Oh. So I just hope it works. 
Have you got one of these? I uh, I have something similar, yes. I think barbecue grills on the stern rail of a sailboat can be just so nice. So the propane tank screwed on there tight, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do I want to do this? Uh, yeah, you, you think if you press it and turn it, then it goes like full blast and you got to get a, a match in there pretty fast. I might need something better than this. There I This off just for a moment. And, oh, that comes out. Oh, perfect. I should be able to do this <laughs> over there. Flame going and turn it on. Ah, yeah, I see it. Is it going? Oh, it sure is. And then that goes right there. Broiled uh, fish. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Works. Congratulations. <laughs> that, thing yeah, that, that should, be, there. Yeah, it should yeah. be on there so it doesn't fall off. Fantastic. Oh yeah, you can see the smoke. Yeah. Are you pleased? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Did you find good owners for Tikaiho? Um, it's sold to a Dutch guy. He's just going to use it as a, um, a liverboard. A liverboard, yeah. yeah liverboard. Not cruising. Mm. It's just a boat with a bed and a galley now. Yeah. Uh. So. But it's, it's cheap living aboard. Yep. It's a lot cheaper than renting an apartment. Oh, certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's true all, all over the world. Anywhere you go, you know, yeah. you look at the price of, you know, renting an apartment versus... versus living on your boat either at anchor or even in a marina. Yeah. It's always cheaper than uh, than an apartment, or at least that's one way to look at it, <laughs> try to look at it. Yeah. So I really love this little shelf right here for your coffee, and also, I didn't notice this before, but there are these gigantic lockers here that go to underneath the deck there. You can see right over here, Renee made this shelf, which uh, out of some plywood. And there you go. Table for your coffee. <laughs> That's great. And if you open the companionway door here, you can see this enormous locker where they keep their propane tank. Uh, also in here I see their isotherm refrigeration compressor. Accessible, very accessible, right here in the center cockpit. Yeah, every day Ooh. something new. Yeah. Or you just read a book and you think, oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, or you talk you know to somebody it. and they they've just come from there and oh, that sounds really absolutely. Good. Let's go yeah. there. You know <laughs> where where you end up sailing to and where you end up staying. A lot of it for me has always depended on who I meet and make friends with. Yeah. You know, and and the advice I hear from other cruisers like, oh, you've got to go here. It's wonderful and here's what it will be like for you. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. Okay, I'll try that. <laughs> oh, you want to go too? Okay, now we're in convoy. Uh, yeah. uh, before you know it, we're like crossing the Atlantic together. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the Pacific. We're in the Pacific. Yeah. Uh, so that's, um, your big plan is to complete your circumnavigation back to New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have to go through the Panama Canal. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the timeline will look at? You know, right now we're in January of uh, 2012. So this, um, in May. Yep. In May, go through the Panama in May. In May. Yeah. And then we'll head straight to the Marquesas. Really? Yeah, wow. because we're leaving quite late, we'll be going as fast as we can. I see. We won't be stopping at so you won't be stopping in the Galapagos? Um, if it, if it, if by chance that we end up there, yeah. you know, if that's the way the wind blows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, um, 
it's not as expensive as it used to be at the moment. Really? Yeah. Really? What what happened? Or do you know why? Or I think not many people have been going there. Ah. So it's, they need the tourism. So they. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to hear what it's like for you there, and everywhere else you go. Uh, so straight to the Marquesas. Yes. What's that like? God, if you don't go to the Galapagos, then that's even longer. Uh, something like 3,500, 4,000 nautical yeah. miles. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do you think you'll stay in the Marquesas for long, or do you have it all planned out? From what I've been reading, there's, you've got to pay a bond. A bond? A bond for the French, um, the French islands. Yeah. And um, there was, last year there was a way of, of getting around it, but I, I'll need to pay because I'm a New Zealander. Renee doesn't need to pay because he's um, European. Oh! Yeah. And Americans, Canadians, yeah. Australians, we all need to pay. We need to pay. And it's the price of a year ticket home back to where you come from. I see. And it's a bond and then you get it back when you're when you finished. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still researching that. Yeah. There's a group called Paddle Jumpers. Have you heard of that? No, Paddle Jumpers. No, Paddle Paddle Jumpers? Paddle Jumpers, yeah. yeah. And they've got, they've got a... They keep you up, updated with all the information crossing the Pacific. Huh. Huh. And then there's the Pacific, um, the Panama, that you've got to pay a bond there too. To go through the canal? Or just yeah, to be a, in Panamanian waters? Or? No, it's a, it's to go through the canal. It's, um, you've got to pay, <clears throat> I think it's $800. Yep. And you'll get it back at the end, but you've got to wait for three weeks to get it back. Three weeks? Yeah. That's how long it takes. So, I have to find a way around that one too. Yeah, because it, I mean, you can finish the Panama Canal transit in in a couple of days, right? Yeah. So yeah. then you wait on the other side for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. It sounds like a scam. Well, I, I spoke to Aussie John, and he he didn't wait last year when he went through, and he's still trying to get his money back now. Really? So they want you to wait. It sounds like. No, they want you to go. They make it three weeks, so thinking that you'll get impatient to leave. And you won't. And yeah. then and then once you're gone, they won't have to send yeah. you your money. Yeah. It's, it's like in South Africa, they, they, everything that you bought, there was a tax on it, and they said, well, when you leave, you'll get it back. Five years we left, we're still waiting. <laughs> So a big part of voyaging around the world is researching the places that you're going to long before you get there. You, you really got to do your research. Um, we got arrested. We got arrested when we went to Australia. Um, we one thing we didn't let them know two days before we arrived when we were arriving, what time we were arriving. Yep. And the other the other one was that Renee didn't have a visa. Oh. And the other thing was. What else did we do wrong? There's three things. Anyway, the, um, we'd fly, we're flying in and out of Australia, so we didn't even realise that Renee needed a visa. Oh no! And we had let them know when we left New Caledonia, but we don't have any any email on board, so you can't you can't let them know. I'm just trying to think what the other what the other fine was. Yeah, it was it was seven thousand dollars. Anyway. I wrote a letter to them and they waved it because they could see back that Renee had flown in and out and it was an honest mistake yep. that I didn't realise. Because he's got New Zealand residency, it's not the same. He's not a citizen. So, of us. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 I see. So I didn't realise that that was a difference. But so since then we, we make sure that we know exactly what's required for each country. Yes, visas, yes. Yeah. Uh, Cruising permits, uh, place, places to check in, yeah. what the process with customs and immigration yeah. is like. It's important. Yeah. When we went to. Oh. Wow. Is that a private plane? Private 
good plan, yeah. When we went to Brazil, we researched everything that, to find out whether we needed visas. And when we got to the um, marina and where the owner was, he says, oh no, you need a visa, talking to me. Yeah, yeah, New Zealanders and Australians need a visa. And I said, no, no, we don't. I rang up the embassy in South Africa and they said that we didn't. Yeah. But he said, oh no, I had somebody from Australia just here and they had to leave the country catch a bus out of the country and apply for a visa and then come back. Oh. But that was Australian. So Australians oh. need a visa and we didn't. So that was a relief. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's it's so important to know, you know, what to expect in a in a foreign country. Uh, everything yeah. from, you know, where you can keep your boat to what customs and immigration policies are and what the fees are and are they going to expect money in a bond or for whatever reason. Or, and you need to get you know. update, updated information. Yeah, yeah, because it changes, yeah. Because yeah. so the cruising books, they're all, I mean, the, when they're published, they yeah. being correct, but they change, countries change. I, yeah, we went to, we, we did that Amazon trip and we flew to Bolivia and we were traveling with South Africans and we checked what we thought as much as we, we could, but they couldn't get on the plane to Bolivia because they needed, suddenly they needed visas for, for um, Bolivia. Oh no! Yeah, so they had to go, they had to go down to the capital and get the visas and then catch the next plane in a couple of days. can also be an issue, do you think? I mean, if you go to a foreign country and, and they don't even speak, and you don't speak their language, yeah. then communication can be huge. Yeah. 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 We've been quite lucky so far. Most countries, they speak English. I, uh, and, um, but the Pacific, um, all the French countries might have to get out the dictionary there. <laughs> speak French. Can you speak French? Not at all, but uh, you know, but I will bumble around and try my best with the dictionary and <laughs> phrases and, you know, in any way that I can show that I'm, you know, at least making a, a sincere, genuine attempt just so that they, uh, you know, like me a little more, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe it go, goes a long way when when they see you trying your best, even if you're not getting anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and you need to <clears throat> be dressed nicely to go and yes. wear in. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And be polite and smile. Yeah, that's a big thing with the customs and immigration place. You do need to be presentable. Yeah. You, I see, you know, some some people making the mistake of like going in looking you know dirty yeah. disheveled maybe not even wearing shoes thinking that they're like okay I'm in some little Caribbean island where where uh, it, you know, everybody's walking around barefoot and boy did they make the big mistake when they walk into yeah, the customs office it's disrespectful really. absolutely mm -hmm.